It's really nice to meet you. Uh, pleasure to chat with you about this film. Uh, you know, my first question is really, you've done so many iconic, beautiful films, amazing stories. What was the first thing that drew you to Sunset? Because obviously it's, it's got a, a long history. People have known it for a long time. Well, it took 18 years to get to the screen. Right. Um, I, when I first saw it, I, I was still um, working in an office. Um, in 1971, BBC used to have a, a Sunday serial, and that was on. And of course, there was a jack to work for each section for each week. And I used to live for the next week. Um, I didn't know the, the author at all. I went out and bought it. And it was difficult to read. It is difficult to read. Right. This is in um, Aberdeen Shadorik. Um, but I persevered. Um, and I knew it was a great work, but I was still earning a living, I was over 18 or something, um, and never, never thought that any, anything other than I thought, I remember the, 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 the serial being so wonderful. Mm -hmm. And when I started my um, I, I suddenly thought, and this is 18 years ago now, um, I thought I'd love to have a go at that. <laughs> um, and so we got, we got the manager at script that, that took three years, because he was like three three drafts and then a polish on, on, on the third draft and that's it. Um, and we uh, were mucked around by what was then um, the UK Film Council. You know, um, that was it. it. It was there, dead in the water. And um, Bob Last, who was doing it with me, said, well, could, we, could we try again? After I'd made it, um, the films with the world so, um, of time in the city and the deep blue sea. I said, well, you know how difficult it was last time. Mm -hmm. you know, um, anyway, we got the money together, which wasn't enough, and we all took a gamble. Um, mm -hmm. But it was a hard birth. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's such a... <clears throat> in terms of Scotland, it's such an iconic story. In terms of how you filmed it, it, it looks so iconic. You, you just seem to capture every perfect angle that suits the story to me. Did how hard was the cinematography side of this? Like, uh, was it difficult? Did it just kind of pull itself together easily, or what was that like? No, what I do, I always do camera tests, nice. um, just to know what ratio we're going to use, whether it's film and now digital. Just from now on, it will all be digital. But usually, do those tests, um, and then um, the Andy Harris, who was the production designer, said. Um, do you know a painter, a Danish painter called Hammershaw? And I said, no. He um, said, so well, would you like to look at some pictures? So I said, yes, and they're wonderful. They're very like Vermeer, but they've got a, 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 sometimes a sharper light, but a, a, a very hazy light. Mm -hmm. And they're like, d corridors with distorted. And so, well, if they have a female figure in, she's got her back to the viewer. And it's like a, like a, a different modern version of Vermeer, who mm -hmm. is my greatest love. Right. Um, and so I said, yeah, we, we make the interiors look like that. Wow. Because they've got this strange mystery to them. Um, that the, um, Vermeer has, has it, that's why he's a, a great artist. Where you could look at something still and you could look at it further. And there's strange sorts of just doors in there. I mean, and they're mesmeric, and they're absolutely mesmeric. So I said, yes, that's what we've got to do. And we then um, shot. All the exteriors on 70 millimeter film. And oh, then, it is. And, and then all the interiors on on the Electra. Um, so what they did when they did the conform, um, we got um, all the film uh, down to 4K, um, and so it's a 4K digital print, um, and really rather nice. It, it, I saw an IMAX, and it looks. It just. It looks like a painting. I mean, and especially some of the interiors, like you're talking about, like. You could stop any frame, and it just looks like someone spent hours preparing that moment, you know? Like, I'm amazed. I mean, and, and then speaking even to your script, <coughs> it's almost like snapshots of life as her life kind of evolves. Was that, is that a good way to describe it, or how would you describe her? It's a lot of her life in, in just two and a bit hours. A lot of my films usually are uh, non-linear. Right. But this is linear, like um, House of Mirth. But what's not interesting is literally what happens next. That's not interesting. What's really interesting is what happens emotionally next. Right. Uh, that, 
because you maintain the, the density of the moment. Um, and I, 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 I always give the same example, so please, please bear with me. I said, you, as an example for the students, you want a man to go from his apartment into somebody else's apartment. And you could do, man comes out of door, gets in the lift, goes out, gets in a car, drives over to the part of the city, goes up in another lift, goes into the building, goes into another, the other apartment. But that geography has got nothing to do with, with cinema. <coughs> if the whole point of the film is that every time he tries to get to the apartment, he's interrupted. Now that's interesting. But the easiest, most succinct way is, you see him come out of his own apartment, the door closes, it opens again and you're inside, and he comes into a different apartment. You know he's gone somewhere else. Right. And it's, it's a beautiful simplicity to, well, I mean, just moving the story along, I, I guess I would say, but I love the fact that it, it never feels jarring, and some films don't accomplish that at all, where you jump like that, but your film just feels like, like you said, you've opened a door and you've closed the door and you've moved between spaces almost. And do what people do. In, in it's amazing. Life. You know, they said, I don't want you to act, I want you to work. I want you to feel it, because that's much more difficult right. if it's felt. Because if it's felt, they start doing things which are unconscious and add to the scene, because film captures fleeting moment, right. like no other art form, right. except music. Music, <laughs> music can do it. Well, your cast is phenomenal. They just, the emotions, I mean, there's something, <coughs> you're, you're tied up in knots for the first half of the film, and then there's that freeing moment around the middle that, you know, Chris has moved on in ways, and it, it's just such a, a an amazing moment to reach. And then, of course, things change again. I just, I, I haven't read the whole book myself, so I don't know what's in there, and, you know, I haven't made through it essentially, but to see what you've done with the story, I can understand that you must have spent a long time with it, I guess. Trouble with, trouble with adapting a novel yeah. is that you can never read it again. Right. Once the film is made, like, as a matter of fact, I can't read it anymore now. I, because I, I mean, I really did, you have to read them a lot, and you think, oh God, you've I'll lived never it, come back. <laughs> I'll never come back to it, which is a shame because it's a great novel. Like, right. House of Mirth is a great novel. But I can't, having adapted them, I just can't get back to it. Right. Which makes sense. I mean, you lived it essentially for so many years. I'm sure you're, you're happy to move on, but other people now are going to get to enjoy it in a way that they never had the opportunity. Do you, do you think the film is going to be... I mean, it speaks so much to Scottish nationalism and so many other topics that... Do you think it's going to be a, a classic amongst uh, people appreciate? Oh gosh, I don't know. I can't think of I don't even say that. That's a tall question for you, I'm sure. <laughs> about your own work. No, the, the, what, the only thing I would say is what Re Ruben Mamoulian said you know, at Hollywood. The real critic is time. And right. Is right. If people want to see it after you're dead, that's lovely. The only drawback with that is that you're not around to know about it. Yeah. Which is, a, I think, God having a horrible little day. <laughs> Well, the last thing I'd like to know is, you know, in terms of, I guess, just coming through it all and, and looking back on it, were there any moments that, that really shone for you as, as the defining moment that, that you knew you were living in this, this book? Uh, you know, once you were actually filming it. Is there something in that? But, but, but there's so many of them, because the, the, the magic is that you know you just go through the lines right, and say this is where you move around these these are the these are the uh, camera positions you know and they come in and uh, they run through for two or three minutes right. and then say yeah, say go um, but what is extraordinary is then they start to do things which you would never thought of and, and Peter brings this real warmth and I've not seen the father as warm at all, but of course it makes it more than all emotional like him, but he's so brutal right um, but he's also capable of tenderness you know, so that I do find that exciting but um, if I have if I have a favorite shot um, we couldn't find any, any way to do um, the, the, the execution right and, uh, we could, uh, and what I'd written we just couldn't find it. Hmm. And Andy Harris, who, showed, who, who uh, was the production designer, said, well, I found this little railway saddle in Luxembourg, 
will you come and see it? Mm. So I sort of, oh, right. So I, I, I got there, and um, he said, what do you think? I said, well, look, let me just walk around for another ten minutes. If I can see the shots, we'll do it. Right. If not, then we'll find some eyes. And so I, I, I went down onto the, onto the station. That's where he should be shot. So yeah, I, I said, give me 20 minutes, I'll redo the shots. Mm. So that's what I did. Wow. I mean, it is those moments of epiphany, I'm sure, that you see the, the place and where things are actually going to happen. Uh, so, otherwise, are you excited about Toronto? Uh, it, it's such a, yeah. It seems like a great place to debut this film for, for Canada. Well, they are, they've always been very supportive here, so I, I do like coming back here. Um, not, in, not in because they've supported my work, but I just feel that you know, it's just nice and civilized. Right. Nice and civilized. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much. You're more than welcome. Pleasure. You're welcome.